Michael's story began when I moved a family heirloom into my bedroom. My father gave me a shift robe belonged to his aunt, so it belonged to my great aunt. It's probably about 150 to 200 years old. Most people wouldn't know what a chiffre robe is. It's got the long mirror with the closet on one side and a dresser and a small mirror on the other side. When I first moved the chiffre robe in, my son was just frantic because he had to have the mirror, the long mirror on the chiffre robe covered. He was just adamant. And when I asked him why it had to be covered, he said the shadow people were going to come out and steal our souls. At first, I just thought he's watched too many scary movies. But I humored him. I covered up the mirror. Then the next day, I took the cover off of the mirror. And that's when it seemed like things started happening. Just odd things. You would see shadows in the house, or things would be moved. I would get hair-raising feelings, or you'd feel an extreme coldness. The dogs obviously see or sense something, because they won't go in my bedroom anymore. And that's creepy. My son's TV came on and off. He says, come on again. And I said, well, unplug it. And he says, it's already unplugged. And that frightened me even more. So then I covered the mirror up on the shift robe again. It just seemed like it was already too late, and just odd, more odd things kept happening. Sometimes my son would just kind of look into space, and it was like he was thinking or daydreaming, only it wasn't just that. It was, it was like he was trying to talk to somebody. He would say things that were beyond it's something a child of his age would say. Then he started talking about his dead daughter. And I'm like, you don't have a dead daughter. But he was adamant that he was talking to his dead daughter. If he didn't say anything for quite a while, I'd say, um, is your daughter mad at you? Because you haven't talked about her for a while. And his response would be, how can she be mad at me? She's dead. Well, that was really odd. Just out of the blue again, one day, he says, you know, they called me Kipper during the war. And I thought, Kipper during the war? What war? And I tried to ask him questions to determine who Kipper might be or, or get a time frame, because at this point, I'm thinking, this isn't really him. There's some somebody trying to communicate through him. As a mother, I was very worried. I thought, oh, there's something wrong with him, and, and maybe I should go get him checked out. But then when I started seeing things happening, that's when I thought, maybe it's not him. One night, I was awakened to the fact that I was moving laterally across my bed. I wasn't rolling. I was on my back and was just moving in a manner I couldn't make myself move if I tried. And it was a very scary feeling. I thought, oh my gosh, there's, there's something touching me. I looked all around. There was nothing around me. It was really shocking. I thought, now they're actually moving me. They're touching me, and this is real. I was truly afraid that we were in danger. And that's when I called a paranormal group to come in and do an investigation. My name is Jeffrey Poe. I'm an intuitive investigator with a paranormal group. As an intuitive, I see things, I hear things, I get the feelings of what's going on with the spirits that have crossed over. I hadn't met him before that night, and he didn't know anything other than there were odd things happening in the house. When I came into the house, I got a very heavy sense and knew that there was a lot of activity going on in there. I had set up cameras in each one of the rooms to gather evidence. We recorded balls of light moving around. Uh, they were probably about the size of golf balls to start out with and went up to about the size of an orange flying around two or three different places in the house. In one of the videos, you can see the light goes across and, and it goes up the wall and back down the other side. When I was there for the investigation, I didn't feel it, I didn't see it. I would have known it was there had we not had the infrared cameras. Another orb was taken right in front of my son's bedroom. There was no color to it. It was black and white, but you almost felt like you could see hair. It was a perfect picture of a little girl. And I can only guess that that was who my son was calling his dead daughter, and she was outside his bedroom door. When Jeffrey came back to the bedroom, he was immediately drawn to the mirror on the shift robe that my son had demanded I cover up. Mirrors can hold energy. They can see things that we don't see, other dimensions. They can see a dramatic incident and hold those thought patterns. As I looked in the mirror, I felt many entities. But the one main entity in the front was the one that was trying to control and get through the mirror to get to the family. I've never felt nothing like this before in my life. Definitely unhuman, not of this world. Later on in the evening, Jeffrey was able to communicate with the presence in the room. 
I got a contact with a entity, a spirit, a ghost, uh, by the name of Kipper. I bet my hair actually stood out on my head. It was like, oh my God, Kipper, that's who my son keeps talking about. And I had told Jeff nothing about Kipper or any of the information. I wanted him to determine it all on his own. Kipper presented himself to me saying that he had died in a war and that he was trapped because he used to be one of the owners of the property nearby. Sometimes ghosts will get stuck in the area where they lived at or somewhere familiar like home to him. He had not crossed over and he was looking for his daughter, Lisa. He had died and could not find her yet. He was trying to keep another entity at bay from hurting the children which was the same demon that I felt in the mirror. At one point, we took some still photos. When we got the pictures back, they were kind of smoky looking, but you could definitely see the darkness and anger trying to get at the family. It's very scary. To look at them, your hair would just raise on your arms. Oh my god, that was in my house. Is it still in my house? And you don't know. I told her she needed to get rid of this mirror. It was definitely the porthole. Things were coming out, and this is what was definitely causing the problems in her house. It kind of makes me sad to think that the Schiffer robe has to be destroyed or I have to get rid of it because it has been a family heirloom. Currently, she is saying that she has it covered, but I think she needs to totally get it out of her house or get rid of it in some other form. I didn't want to be afraid in my own house, but I think that there's still the possibility that at any point something could come back.